Hello and welcome back to Algebra 1-2, where we look at topics in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and additional mathematics. In this lesson, we are continuing to look at simplifying algebraic fractions. So this is part two of our lesson. In the first part, we looked at how to add and subtract algebraic fractions. In this lesson, you will learn how to multiply and divide two algebraic fractions, as well as use factorization skills to simplify algebraic fractions. Before we get into the algebra part, first let's remind ourselves about how do we multiply two common fractions. So, to multiply two common fractions, a, b over a over b times c over d, what we simply do is multiply our numerator times numerator and our denominator times our denominator. So here we have two-thirds multiplied by four-fifths, and what we do is simply to say two times four over 3 times 5, and that gives us, um, in this case, 8 over 15. Now, sometimes in multiplying some things, you may, re may realize that you have a numerator that can divide out a denominator, and of course, where that is possible, you should always try to simplify your answer so that you can write it in its simplest form. But generally, this is it. You multiply your numerator times your numerator, and you multiply your denominator by your denominator, and that will be your answer. Your answer can be better um, written with simplifying if things can be simplified. So, let's now look at how to divide two common fractions. Again, very quickly, if we are dividing two common fractions, then we follow this little rule called KCF, which simply means keep, change, and flip. And it kind of summarizes the whole process of how we go about um, dividing common fractions. So if we have A over B, and we are dividing by C over D, then what we do is that we keep the A over B, we change our division to multiply, so hence the change, and we flip our divisor so that CD becomes D over C, and then we follow the rule as we did with multiplying common fractions and multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So here we'd have A, D over B, C. Find it out on this, you'll realize that two thirds divided by four fifths becomes two over three times keep, change. So we keep, we change, and we're going to flip change that, and we're going to flip this to 5 over 4. And this will now give us 2 times 5 divided by 3 times 4. And this would be your answer 10. 2 times 5 is 10 over 12. Now, in writing down this answer, you realize that the 2 here can divide the 4. So we could simply say 2 can divide itself one time. 2 can divide 4 two times. And so our answer, 10 over 12, could further be simplified as 5 times 1, 5 over 3 times 2, 6. So this is our answer exactly, and this is our answer when simplified. So sometimes in our going through our process, we realize that some things can be simplified out, and when you see those things, you should always try to simplify them out as much as possible. Now let's take these two skills of multiplying common fractions and dividing common fractions and apply them to algebraic fractions. So here we have an algebraic fraction that says x over x minus 1 multiplied by x squared minus 1 um, over x to the third. And from our knowledge of factorization, we rec recognize that this here is the difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. It's important to spot these things, and it comes with a little bit of experience. So as you continue, as you factorize and you work with these things over time, you pick up that, okay, looking at this, this is the difference of two squares. So we're going to write this down now as x over x minus 1. And this part here can be written out as the difference of two squares, of course, we know it is x minus 1 in bracket, x plus 1, and that is over x to the third. And so we can simply go ahead and multiply. So we have x times x minus 1 
times x plus 1, and that is divided by x to the third into x minus 1. And now we notice that these two would divide each other out. And also that um, this x can divide this here and leave a x square here. And so our answer becomes, when we simplify it down, becomes x plus 1 divided by x squared. And so this is how we can apply our knowledge of common fractions and factorization to simplifying algebraic, algebraic um, fractions. There are other examples. We're going to go through a few of them. So let's look at another one. Here we have a division question where we have x plus 3 over x divided by x squared over x plus 3. And using our knowledge of dividing common fractions, we're going to say keep, change, and flip. So we're going to write down x plus 3 over x, change that to multiplication, and then we're going to flip this so that it becomes x plus 3 over x squared. Now, having done this, we simply need to multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. And here we have x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 3 becomes x plus 3 squared. And x times x squared becomes x to the third power. And that is our answer there. There's no need to multiply this out. You can leave it as is. And here we have a, the idea again where we can simply apply the tools of common fractions to algebraic fractions. Let's look at another example. Here we have this expression here that we need to simplify. So we're going to go ahead and simplify it. Looking at our numerator, we realize that we can factor out uh, x out of this numerator. Um, let's make this a little bigger. Notice that we can factor out an x out of this numerator. So we could write this algebraic fraction as using a common factor here of x. We can say x, um, factoring an x out from that, we get x plus 1. And in our denominator, we can factor out an x square. And once we factor out that x square, we realize we're also getting x plus 1. And now we can finish our question by noticing that these two are the same. So we can simply divide this out. And here we can divide this x into this x, and it will simply leave an x here. So writing it out, it would be x times x plus 1 divided by x square, which means, um, let's just write this out, which means x times x into x plus 1. So you can see how it how it divides out there. So that divides that out, and that's, that this one divides that out. So our answer in the end turns out to be, when we simplify it, 1 over x. All right, let's continue and look at another example. Here we have x squared minus 9 divided by x squared plus 4x plus 3. And this here has a trinomial in the denominator, and it has the difference of two squares in the numerator. So to go ahead and simplify this um, algebraic fraction, we need to factorize the, the numerator, and we also need to factorize the denominator. Now, if you, if you do not remember how to factorize trinomials, you need to probably go and look at that video and refresh your memory and then come back here. So here we have x squared minus 9. When we're factoring x squared minus 9, we open two brackets and we take the square roots. So we have x and the square root of 9 would be 3 and minus 3. And that is the, the factorization that we need here when we're factorizing x squared plus 4x plus 3. Remember, we need to rewrite this 4x. And 
once we rewrite this for x, the rules, um, we can write it as x squared plus 3x plus x plus 3. And um, then we factorize this by grouping. And so we can factor it out as x into x plus 3. Use a 1 here, x plus 3. And so we end up with x plus 1 x plus 3. All right, having gone through that very, very quickly, we will re rewrite our expression here as x plus 3. Let's write that properly. x plus 3, x minus 3. That's our numerator. And our denominator comes out as x plus 1, x plus 3. And you realize then that these two can divide each other out. And so what we're left with is our numerator, which is x minus 3, and our denominator, x plus 1. And so we have simplified our algebraic fraction of x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 4x plus 3. Let's look at one final example. Here we have x to the sixth power minus x to the third. And that is divided by x into x minus 1. Now, remember that you need to have your factorization skills um, loaded as you look at these questions because you're going to be factoring a lot and dividing all things that are the same. Now, in this question, we're going to make use of this identity. Um, x to the third minus y to the third is equal to x minus y. Um, bracket x squared plus xy plus y squared. And this is very important when we are doing questions like these, that we be aware of these identities. Now, looking at this question, the first thing that we realize we need to do is to factorize that x to the third power out of our numerator. So let's do that. So if we factor out x to the third from our numerator, we realize that we're going to get x to the sixth divided by x to the third. That gives you x to the third. And x to the third divided by itself gives you 1. And that is over now x into x minus 1. Now we notice that here we can utilize this um, identity. And therefore we can rewrite our bracket as x minus 1. Remember, we use using the identity x cubed minus y cubed is x minus y into x squared plus xy plus y squared. So we are going to rewrite it that way. So we have x squared plus x plus 1. And all of that is divided by x into x minus 1. And now we see that we can do some division. We can this x divide this x cube here and leaves us with an x square. And this x minus 1 divides out this x minus 1 and leaves us with the x square plus x plus 1. So we can rewrite our answer as x square into x square plus x plus 1. And that's our answer there. So how do these things come up? Sometimes when you're doing limits, you're trying to find the limit of a function, or you have um, integrals or stuff like that that you need to do, some of them can be reduced first. You can simplify by going through and dividing out. And then once you do that, you realize that um, some of your questions that look very, really, really big can actually be reduced to smaller so that they can be more manageable. So it's a very, very useful skill to learn. Uh, that is how to factorize algebraic fractions, how not well how to simplify algebraic fractions using factorization techniques and knowledge of how to use common fractions. Now that we've done that, remember to practice these skills and practice them until you master them. And of course, if you haven't subscribed as yet, then please do. Thank you for your support. And of, and of course, thank you for watching. Until next time, we'll see you.